Uh, before I start, make sure if you guys have any questions, um, put them in the Q&A. Uh, we have some people from the EdUp side that would be answering questions, and I'll also answer some questions live as well. Um, awesome. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, um, let's, uh, let's get started. So, just wanted to show you guys uh, the agenda that we have today. So, I'm going to give an overview of, of each of, the, of all the new features that we have and then do a little bit of a breakdown um, slide by slide. And then I'll get into a live demo and show you where you can go to actually either enable these things, or maybe it's a setting or something like that, or maybe it's a brand new feature that you're not aware of. So I'm going to be able to, to show you where you guys can find all of these things in the platform, which is great. Um, and then at the end, I'll have I'll also have a Q&A session. So I'll, I will leave some time at the end. So if you guys did have some questions, um, you know, you can definitely save them for the end as well. All right. Um, yeah, just before I get into all that, I just wanted to uh, talk about where where does our, our roadmap come from? Um, we, from the client success team, work pretty much hand in hand with our product team um, to form a roadmap. Uh, we actually have the probably the first two quarters of next year uh, pretty much lined up already. So just wanted to talk about where do these features come from? Um, a lot of them comes from direct feedback from you. Um, our customers here. Um, some of it comes from, you know, our support mail or live chat. Um, and then just some collaboration between us and our product team um, to form the roadmap that is kind of kind of formed We've been probably at six months, six months to a year ahead of time, which which is pretty cool. Um, but I just wanted to mention that if you guys have any feedback or have any ideas on new features or any way to improve the platform, please reach out to either your client success manager, live chat, um, or support mail. All right, cool. So I wanted to give you guys an overview of new features by stream here. Um, so we have a couple of different streams that I've categorized some of these new features in. So starting with offering, uh, we have a, a review tool that's in beta right now that should be released within the next week or two. Um, this is game changing, so I'm excited to talk about that. We have a new media library with a new library called Unsplash where you can pull images from. Um, we can set up course banners now in the Learners app, and uh, custom dimensions uh, for preview can be saved now. Um, moving on over to course management, really excited to talk about relative due dates and uh, increased notifications in our platform. Um, we have a couple of new reports that have come out or that are about to come out. And then I also wanted to touch on some preset integrations um, that you, know, you may be aware that we do have, uh, or maybe you're not. And then there's been a... a pretty big overhaul when it comes to user management here in NetApp over the past few months. So really excited to talk about that and also some improvements to our practical assessments feature as well. <clears throat> Alrighty then, looks like we're doing, doing good in the chat here. Um, all right, <clears throat> let's move on. So let's get into some of these features here. So first off, I wanna talk about the review tool. So before this, there wasn't a great way to review courses you know, maybe, uh, you know, you have a bunch of authors in your account, or maybe you have some external partners are in an ed app that you want to, you know, have them review a course before it gets published to your audience. Um, the review tool is a way that you can send emails to people, um, to inviting them to review a course, and they don't have to be users in that app, which is great. And then as you can see here in the right hand side of the screenshot, um, you can leave comments, you can tag people, um, you can resolve comments, and you can easily see all the comments that, that are in this course. There's also a section for mentions as well. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about this. And this is one of the things that I'm gonna show you during the demo portion today. Um, and what's great is that, you know, you can do this for every single one of your courses if you'd like. Um, and it's, it's a real good way to uh, make sure that your authors are really gathering this feedback and can have the authoring tool open perhaps in another window while they're looking at this to make some changes. So really excited to talk about that and I'll show you that during the demo portion. Next up, we have the media library. So there, there, before this, there wasn't really a way or a central place to store images or videos or audio files in that app. Um, we now have a media library that's live in everyone's account um, that you can access through the app settings in the admin portal. <clears throat> and this is pretty much a central place where you can store images audio files or videos, and then pull them in into your lessons from the authoring tool. 
What's really great about this too is that we also have another um, image integration with Unsplash here, which allows for you to search thousands of free high-res images with Canva. So between those two, we, you know, even if you don't have images in your current training documents, it's really easy to pull them through um, and insert them into your uh, lessons and they look great, which is awesome. Um, you can also rename these and, or favorite these as a favorite section here. So you know, to easily find certain images, that's really nice. So I'll show you how you can access that in your app settings and also how to pull images or video from there into the authoring tool into a lesson. All right, um, I'm just going to keep going through these and then I'll take a look at the chat and see uh, see how we're doing. <clears throat> so next up, we have course banners in the learners app. So this is really exciting. So what you can do now um, as a banner option is you can actually select course banner and anyone that's assigned this course would be able to see something like this in the screenshot here for this onboarding retail course, for example. And what's what's really nice is that if they click or tap on this, they're brought right into the course. So if you wanted to, you know, shout out a certain course that's, you know, maybe it's a new course or maybe it's one that's mandatory that they have to complete by a certain date, this is a really great way to, you know, make that be perhaps the first thing they see when they log in uh, to app, which is awesome. And then one more thing here too, banners now have auto scroll enabled too. So if you have multiple banners, they will scroll automatically. So learners do not have to click or tap on an arrow icon to scroll through all of the banners. They'll just automatically scroll now, which is great. All right, cool. Next up, we have custom dimensions here. Um, so you can enter this in and in this top right hand corner of the screenshot, you can enter in custom dimensions or even if you select one of these options, you know, whether it be mobile, tablet or desktop for previewing options, the next time you log in, uh, that'll be saved. So you won't have to like, keep toggling over to desktop, for example, if you want to have that be your stock preview option here. So again, something that's a pretty small change, but can be pretty impactful, especially if, you know, maybe maybe you have a, a tablet or something in a warehouse that everyone's using, and you know the specification is there, you can really get the exact specs there. So while you're offering, you can really see um, what they would see, which is awesome. All right, um, I'm going to pause now. Um, yeah, let me just take a look at the q and I see one question is being answered here. Um, we have a question here. Is there, uh, is there a possibility to make maps in the media gallery? That would have to be like an image that you would have to upload. Like if there was like a, you know, like, like a, uh, an image file of a map that you had, you could upload that, but you wouldn't be able to create that um, in, our, in our media library at this time. All right, awesome. And thank you guys for uh, for participating in the chat here. Um, let, let's move on. All right, so next up, we're getting into uh, some of the, the course management improvements here. So um, really excited about relative due dates. So before this, the only way you could set a due date on the course was a static date. The problem with that is that, say, if there are new hires or you know new new groups are added to this course, you know maybe a couple of days before that due date it's not going to automatically adjust based off of that enrollment date. Relative due dates now allows for you to do that. So, you know, instead of having a course being due at the end of December, you can just say, okay, maybe we want, maybe we want to toggle this setting on here and have it 30 days after enrollment. So, you know, maybe if you have a group of new hires that are enrolled in this course 25 days after the initial group or the initial launch of the course, you know, they wouldn't have five days to complete it anymore they would they would start the 30 days would start from that date of enrollment which is either you know they're added as a user and assigned to a user group and then they're shown a course or again maybe maybe in, maybe for enrollment it's a new course that hasn't been published yet that is when the 30-day countdown would start um but what, what's what's also what's really nice about this is that um you know we do have some notifications that i'll talk about in a moment here just one thing to keep in mind is that uh the due date will only apply when a course is published so if this, is, if this is something that you want to enable, you have to make sure that the course is published. All right, so yeah, really excited about, about this one. So we now have notifications for any course that has a due date toggled on. And this is for relative due dates or for static due dates as well, or if you just want to set 
you know, a static date, such as December 30th as your due date. Um, what's really nice about this is that not only do learners get push notifications, they get email notifications automatically. So here in this middle paragraph, I have the cadence here for when notifications are going to be sent out. So we have notifications being sent out two weeks before a due date, one week before a due date, uh, the day before the course is due, and this is all if they haven't completed the course yet. If they've completed it, they won't get these notifications. And then if they still haven't completed it by the due date, they will get two more notifications a week after the due date and two weeks after the due date, all automatically. What's really nice about this too, is that if you have people that um, take EDAP courses in other languages for, let's say, for example, in Spanish, um, that, would, that would be stored in our system. And those emails will be sent in Spanish to that learner, which is, again, really great. Um, so this is really kind of like a set and forget kind of setting here. Um, once you enable that due date on, those notifications will be sent out. Alrighty then. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about the due date modification as well. Um, let's move on here. All right, so we've had a lot of user management improvements over the past few months. Um, that I want to review. Um, for starters, our user page, for those of you that, you know, are at pros, you probably noticed that the user page has, you know, changed. It's got a different look, got a different feel now, which is great. Um, what's really nice about this is that you can really go in now and add more filters to the, to the user list. Um, you know, you can see, you know, the logged in one, I honestly, I use this one all the time. So if you click logged in, you can see if they, you can filter for either has logged in or has not logged in. So if you're, if you're just launching your program, you can see how many people haven't logged in yet. Um, that's one I use all the time here. You can also see if they've been invited or not, and you can also filter by roles as well too. Um, and date registered is also one that's new as well. What's really cool too, is you can search for users and you can search for names now too. So if you want to, if you, you know, if you don't know the usernames or emails of all of your learners, but you know their name, you could just search their name in this bar and some results will pop up, which is great. Um, and then one more thing I wanted to mention too, when you export your users list, which you can do by clicking these three dots up here in the top right hand corner, um, the date registered column uh, has been added. So you can see when they were registered as a user in, in the export now, which is awesome. All right. Also with this new user page, you can, you can see that we have these, these tick boxes here on the left-hand side. What's really nice about that is you can now tick certain users and now execute bulk actions in that app in the LMS. So in some cases, you don't have to, you used to have to export your users list, make changes and import them back in. A lot of these changes you can now do inside of the LMS. So um, in this uh, demonstration here, you can see that um, a user is being ticked they're clicking bulk actions and they're assigning roles to a couple of new roles to a couple of, of learners. And you do have the option to either add or replace roles. Same thing with user groups as well. Um, but you can do roles now, user groups, manage groups, and you can delete users in bulk from the LMS. Now, I just wanna throw this out there that as a reminder, if you delete a user, all their analytics are gone. So just keep that in mind and be careful about deleting users in bulk. Um, but again, this is a great way to, to save some time. Again, rather than having to export user information out and then import it back in, this will save you some time just by, you know, picking the users that you want and then either adding them to their groups or adding roles to their profile, which is awesome. All right. Yeah, next up we have practical assessments improvements. So practical assessments was a new feature that was released a few months ago. Um, if you've attended our webinars in the past, we had one just on this in our other new feature group training. Um, one of the limitations to that was that there wasn't a way to segment facilitators to see practical assessments only for certain user groups. Now you can do that. So in this GIF here, you can see that when, when you go in and you tick the facilitator role here, um, a little box would pop up similar to how you can assign managers to groups. You can now assign facilitators to certain groups too, which is great. So, you know, if you, it's really good too, if you have, you know, maybe you have 50 user groups in your account, for example, um, and you only want facilitators to see practical assessments for a couple of groups that they manage or one group that they manage, they would only see those assessments when they look at the facilitate tab when they log in, which is awesome. Um, so, 
I know that I know that some people too have a lot of these. So and there's like endless scrolling to try to find the one that you want. So this is a this is a really good one uh, and one that we're excited to add to the system here. All right, um, I'm gonna pause again for some questions. All right, looks like we're good. Awesome. And again, make sure if you have any questions to either throw them in the chat or in the Q and A section. All right. Um, Last little section here. We just want to. I just want to go over some new reports that are either live or coming soon, um, and integrations. So the new login stats report can now be accessed. Uh, the old one is still in there, but you can now access the new login stats report. Um, this is really good. You can add. They've added so many more filters in here um, for you to, to filter inside of the LMS, um, such as uh, number of visits, date registered, date visited are new. Um, the active one is really good too. So this one wasn't in the old report either, but you can now select if you just wanna see who's active, which again, that means users that have logged in in the last 30 days and who's inactive. So they haven't logged in in the last 30 days. So that's a filter that you can toggle on here in the LMS. And there still is the export button up here in the top right. So you can still export this information out uh, to CSV, which is awesome. But there is there is some additional search options too, so you can now search by a particular user here as well. If you were just looking for one user, um, so this kind of looks similar to how that how the new user screen uh, looks, um, and are going to be how some of our newer reports are going to be looking in the future, which is great. All right, um, we actually do have a new course completion by user report that is going to be coming out in the future. This is actually. Uh, live in the platform, um, you have to click a button that says click here to view the new report when you load up the course completion by user report. Um, and again, kind of has the same look and feel as the user page and the login stats report here, but um, they, they did add some extra filters here. Um, what's really nice about this too is that there's this little icon here that allow, would allow for you to customize the columns. So if there was a column that you didn't want to see, you can take that out or you can add in another column, which is cool. So I'll definitely be showing you that during the uh, during the demo portion here. And you can see here that you can still, you know, filter by course title, by user, by user group here. Um, and you can change the, the number of results to, um, I believe you can change it to a thousand in this report, which is cool. So, um, and then you still have the export button up here on the top right. All right, and yeah, pretty much the last thing I wanted to break down here is integrations. Um, some of you might not be aware that we do have an integrations tab here. These integrations, no coding is required. Um, you would just enter in things such as your API token or credentials, there might be some other things that you would need to add in here. Um, and then once you do that, you know, a lot of these do different things, but most of them are they're syncing user data. Um, and what's really awesome is that there are, these integrations are available on all of that plans. So if you have one of these systems shown here, um, Hi Bob was one of the new ones that we we've enabled in the last uh, last month or two. Um, there there is some documentation that you can view here when you click on one of these. So if you wanted some more some more documentation there, or you know if you wanted to you know get get some more information on what this does, you can click that and it would bring you to our support article. So I'll show you where this where you can find this um, in the admin portal here. But if, if you know if if you uh, are utilizing one of these systems here, I would definitely take a look at this to see uh, how this can improve uh, either your user flow or more some other things, depending on the integration. All right, so that pretty much sums up all the slides that I wanted to uh, to cover off here. Um, looks like we're pretty good on the q and looks like we have one question being answered right now. So what I wanna do now is I wanna hop into the platform and uh, cover off a, a couple of things um, that I just reviewed with you and show you where you can find them. All right, awesome. So I'm hopping over to the admin portal here. Um, one of the first things I wanna show you is that review tool that we talked about at the top of the call. So once this is enabled in your account, and this is a beta now, if you're looking, if you're interested in being added to the beta, I would say reach out to your client success manager or live chat or support mail, and they can get you added. But this feature should be live on the platform within the next couple of weeks. Um, if I hover over a course here and click edit, you'll see that there's now this big review button, which is next to the publish button or revert to draft button here. So what I can do here, I can come here and click review. And now it's gonna open up another tab here 
which is similar to that screenshot that I showed you before. So what's really nice here is that you can, you can toggle through the different lessons here, um, kind of similar to our course preview. Um, and then you can click through the slides and you can see too that um, there are some comments on these slides that are changing as I toggle through here. Um, what's also really nice is that I can click all here and it can show me all of the comments that have been made um, on, on this course. Um, you can see that people have been tagged. I can also see my mentions. So if someone mentioned me, I can also come here and see that. Um, and then, then I can add a reply, right? So, and I can maybe, I can tag back because I've wanted to tag somewhere back. I can say, like maybe I say, thanks, I've, rem I've removed this. I can post that. If you do tag someone, they will get an email notification on this. Uh, and then I can resolve this comment. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure you're wondering, how do we invite people to review uh, this course? There is a share button here. So anyone that's an admin or an author has the ability to come here and share this with other, um, with other people. So you can come here and just enter an email and then enter and, and you can add a message too, if you like. Um, maybe, maybe it's some instructions on, on what you'd like for them to do. You can come in here, enter in an email and click send invite. And these are, these are the people that are already um, reviewing right now, but you could remove someone as a, re as a reviewer here if you wish to do so. Um, so that's how you would share that. Um, and again, they don't need to have an NEP account. Um, they could just be someone that doesn't have an NEP account. So it, they would prompt for them to make login credentials and then they can go ahead and, and start reviewing. Um, <clears throat> if I click the three dots here, I can show resolved comments. So once I resolve a comment, it would disappear from this all list, but I can toggle that on or off, um, which is great. So, and again, what's cool too, is if I click on one of these, it'll bring me right to the comment or right to the slide in the preview. So this is lesson two, slide eight. Um, so I can see that. And again, I can add a reply. I could also add a reply without tagging someone. I could just say, thanks. And then maybe I'll resolve this one. You can also click the three dots there to edit or delete your comment as well. So I like to call this as kind of like Google Docs style where you can comment on things, comments can be resolved, um, but this is a really good way for authors or, or admins to see or get some feedback on some courses that have been created. Um, now, there's no way for an author or an admin to author in this preview. So that's where you might wanna go back to, to another tab have the authoring tool open and just toggle back and forth between the tabs right now to make the changes that are that are set up here. Um, but yeah, what, and once that's done, and once you're done, you can click the I'm done button. Um, you can select users to notify. So if you were a reviewer and you wanted to select, you know, another author or the admin um, and say, hey, I'm done, you could do that. You can also not, you, there's also an, op an option here to not notify anyone and you can just complete your review. Um, and there is an option to add a message here as well, if you are gonna be sending, uh, sending this to, to users. Um, so they will get an email notification when, when your, the review is done. Awesome. We do have uh, this little, this BO here is it's gonna be like your user profile here. You can sign out or go back to the main course page from here as well. Um, and again, one thing too, to mention is that you can change the device types, right? So if you're, if you know, if your learners are primarily desktop, you can just put toggle on desktop and then do your, your review this way. Um, but you can see as I'm going through and as I'm toggling through the slides here, I can put in a comment. Um, maybe it's um, add ver verbiage here and post. And, uh, and now it's here. And again, if I click these three dots, I can edit or delete the, my comment. So pretty cool stuff here. Um, Awesome. Uh, yeah, it looks like we don't have any questions so far. Um, but yeah, this is the review tool. Again, should be live in the platform in the next couple of weeks. And uh, if you'd like to be added to the beta, please let us know. All right, awesome. Um, next up, I wanted to show, I want to show you the media library. So to access the, the general media library, you can click this drop down arrow here in the top right hand corner. Go to app settings. And then if you toggle, toggle to the content tab, there's an access media library button here. So once I click that, you can see here that we have some images that are, are, are added here. So 
how do you add images to here? You could just click add to library and it would bring up your file picker to upload an image perhaps from your computer. Images that you upload through the authoring tool will also automatically be added to here. So, so if you click the upload button on an image slide in the authoring tool, it will, it will be added right to the media library, which is great. Um, if you didn't want a certain image to, to be here, say the smiley face, for example, I can click the delete button and then remove the, remove the file, but it will only remove it from the library. It won't remove it from existing lessons. So if this image is in five lessons, like five slides across your courseware, it will not remove it from the actual lesson, which is good. Um, but you know, some of these have some some weird image names. If I if I hover over an image and click detail, I can come here and I can rename it. Maybe maybe we just name this beer. You can also enter a description as well and then click save, um, which is which is pretty cool. Um, oops, let me go back in here. And this is just this is just the image images section here. There are different there are different sections for videos. So there's a couple of videos that we have here. Um, audio, if you, uh, you have some MP3 files for, for voiceovers or, or narrations or something like that, you can you can click there. Um, there is a, a favorite section as well. Is there anything in favorites? There isn't, but maybe if I want to make this this uh, this dog picture my favorite, this is a good one. Now it's added to my favorites here. And lastly, you can also add images from Canva right into here too, which is nice. So if if uh, you know, say if you want to search for you know a stock image from Canva. Um, let's say, let's say if we're, we, we're, we're still on, 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 on the, the dog, dog trip here. Anybody just want to add this dog into my media library? I can come here and click publish. Oops. Looks like, uh, we have an issue. Let's try to do another one here. Oh, looks, looks like that's not, not working right now. Um, but that's how you would be able to go in there and do that. You can also move this over if you don't want to see this, uh, this little section here, but one thing to keep in mind is you can also search for images here. So if I wanted to search for that dog, pic, one of the dog pictures, you can come here and it will just um, search anything in the title, which is great. So that's that's how you would access the media library. Now, what I want to show you is how how can you pull images from there or audio or video from there into your lesson. So let's go back to my food safety hazards course that I've I've been demoing. Let me open up the offering tool here. And I'll just show you with images for now. So for example, we have an image slider here. Um, if I hover over the image uh, or the content section here where there's an image, I can upload an image. That'd be straight up from my computer, use the Canva integration, or in the middle here, we have the option for media library. So if I wanted to come here and replace this image or add an image of one of these here, you know, maybe we wanna select this one. Now you can see here that this this image has now been been changed um, and, and has been inserted into this uh, into this lesson. What's really nice about this too is you can see here down here we have that browse unsplash button. So this is this is a, a brand new integration now we have um, right. So this lesson is about food hazards. So if I search food here, um, you know a bunch of different high res images images come up. So. I like this this photo of pizza. I can just click select here and now it will just be inserted right into my lesson um, and added to my media library once I go ahead and do this, which is great. You can also click add to library um, from here as well. Yep, so here's my here's my picture of pizza looking pretty good. And again, all of those images are high resolution, so they're going to look great inside of your lessons. All right. Just checking the chat here. Awesome. Um, looks like we're okay. <clears throat> Let's move on. Um, so, yep, yeah, that's pretty much the media library in a nutshell here. Um, I also want to cover off how to create a course banner. So, say we have this course, it's looking great, it's ready to go, it's ready to be published. Um, if I click the engage tab here and go to banners, uh, this is where you can now create a course banner. So, um, these are all of the banners that I have in this account, and, and you can see now that we have some course, we have some custom here as well. So the custom banners are just, they're not related with the course, it's just, you know, a banner that you would create. Could be in Canva, could be outside of, outside of the platform somehow. Um, but if I come here and click create banner, now you can see that there's two banner options, which is nice, right? So maybe I want to make this title this food hazards, and then I can click course banner. 
And what we'll do, there's a little section here for me to search my course library. And I can actually search for names of courses. So here's webinar food safety hazards, and it will tell you if the course is in draft two, which is nice. So once I select that, you can easily see a preview here. This is how it would look on mobile. Um, it pretty much just takes the course cover image and makes that the image of the course banner, but I can click customize here and I could, I could add in another image, upload it from my computer or grab it from the media library or use Canva here. For now, I'll just untick this. Um, I can click this to make it visible and I can save my changes. If I click settings here, you can see that the access rules, this can be edited, but anyone that's assigned this course will now see this when they log into the learners app. So if I go back to banners here, now this is my first banner. So if I come here, oops, let me close this for now. If I come to the learners app, refresh this, I should be able to see, yep, here's my food safety hazards course. Um, you will notice too that again, they auto scroll, which is good. I have a couple of, of course banners in this account, but if I go back and click on this, I will now be brought right to this course in the learners app and I can start, start my training, which is great. Um, cool. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I would definitely, definitely uh, come in here and take advantage of that. Again, especially if it's a new course um, that maybe you want to shout out or again, a mandatory course, that can be one of the first things that you see. And if you only have one banner on your account, there wouldn't be an auto scroll that would just stay static up there for you. All right, awesome. <clears throat> uh, let's go through a couple other things. I'm calling this in the time here. I wanna now show you how to enable a relative due date on a course. So let's go back to my courses screen here. Let's go back to my webinar course. Um, you'll also notice too that the, the settings, they used to say settings here, they're just a cog icon here. So I, I can hover over this and click settings. And now I'm in the course settings in the access rules tab. So here now you can see that this is where I can go to toggle on or off and access date. So if I toggle this on, this is where you can do either on a date or I can do days after enrollment. And this, this is how the relative due date is enabled. So again, this is where, you know, if you wanted for it to be 30 days after a user is enrolled, again, maybe it's annual training that you just have published for the year. I have some clients that do that, right? Maybe you have some people do a lot of their training in January. If someone's hired in June, instead of it being a static date, you can, you can say, okay, now you have 30 days to complete this. And you can change this too, right? So if you can make it 60 days, for example, uh, you can change that and click update, for example, and it would, it would update from that point forward. Um, but again, this is just a really good way to make sure that, you know, people are comp not only completing courseware on time, but you're giving them enough time to complete courses. And you don't have to worry about, you know, resetting course dates or, um, you know, having to, you know, do some other setting changes. This will just work whenever they're started to be enrolled into the course, which is awesome. And again, for a, a relative date, due date or a static due date, they will get email notifications um, on that, which is awesome. I'm just gonna pause for questions here. Um, that, that's a, looks like we have a long question here. Um, I'm, gonna let, uh, I'm gonna let my colleagues answer that one. Um, all right, let's move on. So this is where you can go ahead and again and just set that relative due date up. Um, it, would, it will have to be toggled on for every single course. So you just have to go to the course settings of all your courses, the access rules tab, which is the first tab, and then just toggle this on and then tick days after enrollment. Um, we do have, we do have a, a really nice support article on this too. So I would recommend heading on over to our support site for more information. All right, so that pretty much covers authoring and course management. Um, let's head on over to some of the user improvements. So if I click the user tab and click on users here, We'll get into some of the new stuff. So again, I can now search, I can search users by name now, which is nice. Um, click the filters, have some of those additional filters. So again, I love this logged in section here. So maybe you launched and you wanna see who hasn't logged in yet. I can click has not logged in, apply. And it looks like we have 74 people that have not logged in that are in this account. I can come here and click reset all to reset my filters, but you can also toggle multiple multiple filters on. So if I wanted to, you know, maybe toggle on by user group and see who hasn't logged in, I can do that and we can see if there are any, which there are, there's 20. So you can, there's a lot of multiple filters that you can combine here. 
again, we added the date registered uh, field as well, which is really cool. And uh, we do have uh, this icon here or th this uh, toggle here where you can change this from showing 25 results up to 100 results um, to decrease the amount of pages you'd have to, to you know, swipe through down here in the bottom. Um, you can also now see roles on here, which you, could, which you, you couldn't before in the past, which is great. Um, and you can also now see with, the, with some of these lightning bolts, if you're using dynamic user groups, you can see which of those user groups are dynamic just by taking a look and seeing which, which of these groups have a lightning bolt icon next, uh, next to it. So it's like Manager South is, is a dynamic group. Awesome. Um, yeah, so if I come here and take a couple of learners, you can see again that this bottom bar appears. I can clear all if I made a mistake, but I can, I can tick some of these at once. I could click the, the delete button. Again, if I do, this action is irreversible. You would have to click, uh, type out delete and click delete users here. Um, or the other option is I can come here, click bulk, bulk actions, and then either assign user groups or assign roles. So user groups, for example, will bring me to this modal. I can also add additional users as well. So I can come here, um, you know, maybe if you wanted to add one more, I can come here and add more. Then I can click next. And now I can search for the user group or user groups that I want to add them to. Maybe I want to add them to this test user group. Again, you can do multiple user groups, which is nice. Then I can click next. Now you have the option to either add them to a user group or replace their existing user groups. Um, for now, I'll just add because they're already assigned to some user groups. And now it's already done, continue. So again, saves you a lot of time rather than before in the past, you having to export your users list, make those changes in bulk and then importing it back into the system, which is awesome. But again, same, same logic applies to roles and managed groups as well. All right, awesome. Um, let me actually now show you um, that practical assessment improvement. So for example, let me find someone. Yeah, so this person is just a reviewer. Um, I'll come down and click on a user here, scroll down in the user profile, and you can see now that if when I tick facilitator, this facilitator box now pops up. So by default, there will be a facilitator for all user groups, but if you didn't want that, I can untick this and I can. Yeah, let's uh, let's make them the facilitator of the New York group and click save. Once I do that, they would only be able to see practical assessments here just for the group that groups that you toggle over here. So if there are practical assessments assigned to other groups and not the New York group, then they won't be able to see any of those assessments when they log in. Um, so again, this is this is a really, really nice one here. Um, if you haven't checked out the practical assessments feature yet, I would I would definitely do that. Um, and if they go to facilitate practical assessments, that's where they would go to conduct those assessments. All right, great. Um, yeah, got, got some time left. Um, I just wanna show you a couple of those new reports. So if I go to the login statistics by user reports under the analytics tab here, um, you'll see that now there is this view new report. So if I click on that, and this is available in all accounts, the new report will, will populate. So this is where I can go in and okay, maybe if I want to select inactive, just make sure you click enter after you do that and then, and then the results will, will appear. So I can see all my inactive users. So those are users that haven't logged in in the last 30 days. And then again, I have some of the additional, fil the, the additional filters here. You also have the number of visits uh, toggle, which is pretty cool too. Maybe you want to see, okay, who's visited, maybe you want to see who's visited, uh, this between maybe 20 and 100 times visited the app. I can come here and click apply. And now you can see that uh, the filters have applied. So again, really nice stuff, really cool stuff. You can search by you know username, full name, or email. Um, you can also select which app version people are using, which could be good to you know identify if anyone there is using older versions of the app, if they're mobile users. Um, and then this column icon is really cool. Right, so if maybe you want to add full name in here, you get rid of user, I can click apply. So now we can see when they were registered in their full name here. So you can do this with a couple of these couple of these columns. There are some that are not shown here. Um, so you could either select or deselect some of these, which is really nice. And again, we have this export button here where you can export this out. All right. Next up, if I go to the course completion by user report here, uh, we do have that new report as well. 
and eventually uh, the new login stats and the new course completion by user report will, will replace this version. We're just not sure when that would happen at this point. But if I click here to check out the new version, it will open up a new tab for the course completion by user report. And again, has the same look and feel as a user page, the login stats report. Um, if I click filters here and scroll down, um, I can actually can filter by due date, course completed, start date and end date. You can actually now filter by score and progress. And here is where you can filter by custom fields. So if you use custom fields in your account, you can come here um, and you could, you know, type in something. Um, maybe if I do job title manager, I can click apply and we can see if there's anyone that has, yep, looks like we have some people with manager and their job title here. Um, I'll reset those for now. Um, and again, what's really nice about this one too is we do have columns here too. So right now you'd have to scroll over to the right to see some additional columns here. So you can come here and then you could maybe deselect some of these. Like if you don't use due date, you can deselect that. And maybe you want to add in a custom field. Maybe you want to add in job title to this. So you can tick that and click apply to do some uh, reorganization of these columns, which is really good. And here, here's the export button uh, for this one. Again, pretty much in the same spot as the login stats report. All right, just have one more thing um, I want to show you, and that's integration. So if I click this drop down arrow again, there's an integration section. So I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but you can come here and these are all of the, um, what I call preset integrations where it's set up in the platform already. So no coding is required. Um, so I can come here. If I say I want to select Bamboo HR, for example, it will give me a description. So this is for um, syncing uh, new and existing employees. Click the setup here and, and there's there's some, uh, some technical details that you'd have to come in here to uh, input. And then once you do that, there's a settings tab where you can toggle on some settings, but I can click view documentation here and it will bring up a support article here for this integration for, with, for more information. So if you're using one of these, I would definitely uh, you know come here again, maybe hi Bob, for example, I can come here, um, view documentation or just put in the a, uh, API token uh, and then you're, you're all set and ready to go. All right. Cool. Yeah, just checking the chat here. Yeah, that, that's a great suggestion, Stuart. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover off for the demo portion. Um, just wanted to have a last call for any any other any additional questions on anything that we we showed you today. Um, again, there will, will be a recording of this that's either sent to you or posted on YouTube. Um, so, or our website as well. So make sure to, to, you know, check those, those mediums for the recordings. Um, we can also see if we can get the slide deck over to you guys as well, but just wanted to have a last call for any additional questions that I can answer. All right. It looks like we're all good. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. Um, just a couple, couple other things I wanted to show you. Um, we have a live chat that's available 24 five. Uh, support.adapt.com for support articles such as the Bamboo HR integration, um, support at adapt.com for the support email. And then um, if you like a, a more personalized demo, we have some uh, oops, we have some contacts here uh, that we can put in the chat for you um, if you want it for you know a more detailed demo. All right. Great. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you for your time. And um, yeah. Uh, have a have a good uh, have a good rest of your year.